Good morning, San Pedro. Today we're cooking the beef heart, and today I'm going to show you originally what I thought was three, but now we're showing you four, four dishes with the beef heart. Stay tuned. Good morning, San Pedro. I'm Kat, the funky cook for Reef TV, and today I'm cooking up a beef heart. Now, the beautiful thing about the beef heart is we have one billion cows out there in the world. It's not just a muscle, it's also an organ meat. It has no funky flavors, unlike liver. It's super versatile, and since we live on an island, we have no cows here. Uh, I had to have this one flown in from Southside Meats, and here we go. I'm going to open this heart up. There's not a lot of fat on the heart, so you don't really have to do a lot of cleaning or cutting on the heart. Trim off some of this funky stuff. And we're going to do it super easy today. We're going to put everything in a crock pot, let it just brew down to where it's falling apart. And we're going to do three different recipes with it. We're going to do a salt pecan. We're going to do a beef heart pate, and we're also going to do some tacos, little fried tacos. So get up the funky stuff. So you're like a heart surgeon right now. Do what? You're like a heart surgeon. It kind of. <laughs> Look at that. That's really kind of cool. You can see all the ventricles and valves inside. I mean, it's, it's literally a heart. If you've ever wanted... To see a heart, I mean, and have so much respect for a heart, I would think this is the way to go. And some you, people say I'm heartless, but I'm going to no, say that. I, I, was got just gonna the biggest, I got the biggest heart on the island, baby. <laughs> All right. So, cutting into it. You don't have to worry about really re re removing any veins or anything. They kind of fall apart when you cook it. If there's anything that really bothers you inside the heart, just take it out. Sometimes the valves can be a little stiff. I'm sure you all think I'm about to chop my hand off, but it's what we have the Poly Clinic for. Chop that bad boy up. Some people just sear it. You can literally marinate this in red wine vinegar overnight. Sear it. It looks very tender. Huh? It looks very tender. Yeah, well, the vinegar tenderizes it. So you soak it in. This is very tender, yes. And there's no fat, almost no fat in it. No saturated fats. Super high in zinc and niacin and selenium. All the B vitamins. Coenzyme Q10, which we know is for immunity. It's it's such a ridiculously amazing meat. Uh, the first time I had it was in a Colombian restaurant in Dallas. And it was in the form of a pate with the chimichurri butter and bread. And I just oh, I couldn't get enough of it. Couldn't get enough. So I Googled and Googled and Googled and couldn't find anything about the pate that I had eaten. And um, so I kind of just developed my own recipe by braising it down. Are you gonna use? Uh, I'm so stoked, I can't wait till this is gonna be ready. And then I talked to Chef Charles Worthington, and oh, who don't need that, and he, spoke to me about salpicon, which is a Belizean dish. It's a Central American dish, essentially. <laughs> Don't worry, we got plenty more onions. A lot of onions on this island, not a lot of cows. And um, I looked up the salpicon and it's just, it looked beautiful. So we're gonna make the salpicon, which is a salad, a marinated shredded beef salad the pate, and the tacos. 
It's all going in the crock pot. We're not heating this house up today. Well, we can't. We don't have any butane right now. If you guys want to come by and deliver the butane. <laughs> I'm washing my hands real quick. I got my onions already chopped. Just going to give them another little healthy chop. Get those flavors out and about. Seasoning, seasoning, seasoning. I'm using some Cavender's Greek seasoning. It's got oregano, it's got lemon, it's got salt, it's got pepper, it's got everything I want. Every flavor profile that I'm looking for. I'm going to add my onions. My garlic. Does everyone know how to chop garlic? It's kind of like sewing a button. You need to know. Take your garlic clove. Smash it down with your hand. Pull it right out. Chop it right up. Now another technique I learned, not until I was 50 years old, <laughs> was to literally just take your knife and stick it into the actual clove itself and it comes out with no skin. I mean crazy, crazy, crazy. So we're going to put chop all this up, put all this garlic in there. I'm going to throw a few bay leaves in there. I've even got some thyme, fresh thyme I scored. I think I'm going to start growing this stuff. This is, the thyme is really important to me. It's, it's a specific flavor that I love. Red wine. Oh, do I dare put my mouth on this to get it out. <laughs> there we go. Red wine, red wine. I'm going to save a little bit for me. Just a little. A little Justin Wilson style. And then you remember my beautiful golden congealed yummy collagen yumminess? I'm going to add a big old lump of that. I'm going to seal it up, plug it in, and I'll see you back in a couple hours. We're going to name this mural Contact Frenchies to name it Winter is Announced Wednesday. I actually got a fourth meal out of it, and I didn't even realize I was going to get one. This is this beautiful, beautiful gravy that I've got. And I'll tell you what, if this isn't poutine heaven right here, it is deep, it is the, the collagen, it is onions, garlic, it's... It, the, the taste is amazing. I was going to give it to the dog, but mommy said, no, 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 no. Poutine, baby. All right, so first off, what we're going to do is we're going to start with this salsa pond. I've taken a bunch of vegetables from the, the vegetable stand. A lot of people use lettuce. Um, it's basically a cold shredded beef salad. So what I've got in here is purple cabbage, purple onion, radish, tomato, and what I'm going to add to this is a bunch of lime juice for, so I have some acidity. While I'm squeezing these limes in here, I'm going to go ahead and soften up. Eh, we'll start with two tortillas. I've got some oil heating over here in my little pan. Limes, limes, everywhere are limes. Salpicon. And I'm making this first because I gotta let this marinate just a tiny bit. I got that oil on low so I don't burn my little flour tortillas because I just want to soften them. I really don't want to cook them. So low I can turn it with my fingers. More lime, more lime. As much lime as you can get. As much lime as you can get from your local lime dealer. All right, got my lime. I'm going to take my little tortillas out. I'll let them uh, 
get a little bit of oil off, take them a dump and stuff them with meat and show you how to make a little deep fried Tex-Mex tortilla. So now I've got my salpicon in here. I'm going to use some white truffle oil. You can use olive oil. I like white truffle oil. It just gives it a different kick. We're going to use some salt and a little pepper. I got something to measure my salt with this time. You can use any vegetables that you like. Any vegetables you like. Mix that up. Do I dare stick my fingers in and taste it? Absolutely. Never trust the skinny chef or one that doesn't eat with their fingers. That's amazing. All right. So now we're going to talk about our bee park and how we're going to prepare it. They're beautiful little tender chunks. I'm going to slice them up. Now, salpicons are shredded hold meat salad. So I chilled these beef chunks after I cooked them. I let them cool down in the crock pot. I didn't pull them out immediately, and I let them chill overnight. And the flavor enhanced, God, I don't know, two, three hundred percent. I'm pretty super stoked about this. You know, you never know if something's going to turn out to be dog food or not. But I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked to show this off to a couple people in town. Me and those fruits and vegetables right in front of me, boy. You don't want to be standing in front of me while I'm cooking. You might get hit by an onion or a lime. Okay. Just chop that up. Some of this is going to go in my salpicon. Some of it's going in my tacos. How to prepare your taco. Take your little taco shells and put a little bit of meat in them. Should we put cheese in them or just meat? Just some meat. I got little toothpicks. We're going to pin these little babies shut. Toothpicking them like a little diaper. And into my oil they go. They're crackling and they're cooking. Next, I'm going to show you my salpicon salad. And you can also bake the, the tacos, right? You could bake them, but here in Belize, it's so hot, you don't want to turn on the oven. That's a huge mistake. So here we've got our shredded beef salad. If you're watching your way, which, you know, you only have to do that if you're in the United States. Once you get here, the rounder, the happier, the healthier you are, the more accepted you are. You don't have to play around here with your weight. A little avocado. Oh, my goodness. It's already looking good. Woo, woo, woo. Now, for that, I would want a little cheese. I'm cheese short. I'm cheese shy today. But this is my beautiful South Pecan salad. Absolutely gorgeous. Add more meat. Definitely add more meat. I've got my little tacos here just to cooking away. My little pin tacos. Crunchy, wonderful. They're so fast. They're so quick. This is a great thing for family night. Let them each stuff their own little tacos and mommy can cook them. The kids can cook them. It's not that hard. I'm going to turn that down on low. Well, now I show you how to make a beef heart pate. What I did was I started with a compound butter. The compound butter I'm going to use to work with my toast and with the different flavors in my beef heart. So what, how I started with my compound butter is I plain old butter. The higher the fat content, the better. Unsalted. I chopped up basil. I chopped up parsley, fresh garlic. There's also red wine vinegar and a little bit of yuzu sauce, yuzu juice, which I brought from the States. It's somewhat like a lemon, but a little bit sweeter. It adds a very um, imparting different flavor that cuts through the meatiness, and it's beautiful. So right now I'm finishing these up. 
I'm adding these to my, my wonderful platter. <laughs> and now on for the big guy, the pate. So the compound butter I'm not going to add to the actual beef pate, the beef heart pate. Adding my beef pieces in. Not too much of the gravy. I don't want that to be the deciding factor in this. I want that beef part to really have all the texture. Beef parts in. Lid on. And you want it to have more of a grainy texture. You want to be able to taste this and feel this a little bit more. And don't worry, I'm going to show it to you when I'm done. So you can see what I'm talking about. It's like a cat in heat, boy. Now, I always add another chunk of butter because, now, this beef heart's super, super lean. There's almost no fat in it. I think there's seven grams of unsaturated fat. Damn. She's done. She's, uh, she's delicious. She's wonderful. You can always have a hard time getting this out of here. Eventually, I'm going to invent one that you don't have to do that with. Here's my beautiful beef heart. Like magic, I'm back. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. So I have my little spatula. This is my beautiful beef heart. Yum, 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 yum. Now, if you feel that you need to uh, address the ingredients any different way after you get it out, go ahead and do that. I think it's pretty flavorful, pretty spicy the way it is. I've also got some beautiful little toast points, and that's how I would serve this. I would serve it with a little bit of compound butter. I'm going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> I actually put compound butter on these. I just went through capers in there. And then your beef pate. food I've got. This is one beef heart. Bam, 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 bam. And poutine. If you don't know what poutine is, it's french fries with cheese curds and beef gravy all over it. Mmm. Thank you for joining in. I hope you have a wonderful week. I love you, San Pedro. And here we go with the final product. Look at that beauty. That beef heart's tender, cooked down with all the aromatics. I sure wish you could smell it. It's amazing. The liqueur, the meat, 